Stories were told back in 1940 about a gang called the Crazy Snakes. According to history, they might have a connection, but maybe, who knows? Today, we're gonna talk about the modern gang called the Insane Spanish Cobras. Let's get into this video. In a city known for its fearsome super gangs, criminal enterprise like the mob, gangs, Chicago has its own culture from graffiti on the walls to how the south side and the north side are separated. In Chicago, it's where you're born that defines who you are, not your race. This is gang life. Cartel got me working for the big faces. Federally got my car full of brick cases. Hit the pin with a grin, there ain't no faking. I picked to my back for my shoelaces. God out, should have seen the look on their faces. All jealous cause your boy stacking hella. Hey, what's up guys? My name is JC. I am Wrong Strong. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, hit that bell so you don't miss nothing. If you're part of my crew, mi familia, mi raza. You already know Chicago. Suan Sela Suburban, we're taking a ride to Humble Park. What's up, guys? Hey, JC here, you already know. Another episode of Gang Life. Today, we're gonna talk about the Spanish Cobras. It is a Latino gang that was started by Puerto Rican kids in the Humble Park area. But, they do have other members that are not Puerto Rican. They have Dominicans, they have some Mexicans, and they even have some blacks and some whites. They are, they are a powerhouse on the north side and northwest side of Chicago. And they've managed to spread out to the suburbs, Cicero, Milwaukee, other states. And you know, they do what, what organizations do in Chicago. Make money, grow, kill, do time, you already know. The Spanish Cobras first made headlines when they stabbed the Land King in 1977. That led to the Humble Park Riots. By 1979, they had an all-out violent war with the insane unknowns. It's another gang that's on the north side, but they're people, the Cobras are folks. So the unknowns right under the five-point star, the Cobras run under the six-point star. It was all over the newspaper. It took a lot of, it was a lot of death, a lot of, a lot of destruction, that war. And this, this is what happens when all-out war happens like this, that it creates a lot of bad blood that you'll never be able to fix again. Yeah. It takes a lot of work. As they grew and started taking over more hoods of other gangs, more wars started to happen. You know, once you start growing like that and you start kind of just taking over streets, taking over streets, taking over people's hoods, you're open for business, for war. You're pretty much taking over because people don't realize it's really not about the streets no more. You know, it's about taking over streets, but it's because now you're open up for, for business to sell drugs and pretty much grow. You're getting bigger and bigger, so that makes you more powerful. When they started to grow like that, then they went into a war with the Simon City Royals. The MODs were really close allies of them until about the 1980s, maybe into the 90s, when they started moving into their turf too, and it started an all-out war with them also. The Spanish Cobras were known for setting up the Insane Familia. It's called the Black and Green Machine. A concept that got gangs together because they they seen that the maniacs were going to be a powerhouse and they were going to have to deal with them and they were going to cause problems. So they created the Insane Family. You know, there was a lot of gangs that were part, part of that from that organization, an umbrella, if you would so call it. The uh, Insane Deuces were part of it. 
the Harrison Gents, the Vikings. There was a lot of gangs that were part of that umbrella in order to stick together because they were all trying to fight, obviously, the same gangs. It's very, very different in the north side compared to the south side because in the north side, there's a lot of more uh, gangs, you know, the OAs, the Vikings, the Harrison Gents, the Unknowns. There's a lot more gangs on the north side than there is on the south side. Uh, I mean, in my time. Now, now who knows? But back in my time on the south side, there, there was the 2-6, the Kings, the SDs, the 2-2 two -two boys. There wasn't like, it, it was half of what it is on the north side. That's why I always say that. Chicago is very, very rich in history because if you actually draw a line in the middle, the south side is very different to the north side and people would know that you were from the south side when you went to the north side and you know, vice versa. That's just how it was. Even the Mexicans that grew, grew up on the north side that hung around with Puerto Ricans and Dominicans their whole life had a very different stilo from the ones on the south side. And that's just how it is. In 1998, the Chicago PD arrested 31 Cobras with the Operation Mongoose. This is an operation that was launched in order to knock down their hierarchy of leaders that, you know, that's what they do. That's what they always do. Once you start getting into a big power, you start turning into a big gang that has a lot of power, they have to dis destroy you and what they do is they knock off the heads. But what they fail to realize is that once they do that, they create chaos because now you have all types of the same gang and different factions running around with their heads cut off. Everybody wanted to be a chief and not enough Indians. So that's what happens. Today the Cobras still stand and holds most of their power. They still hold most of their neighborhood. They're still powerful gang. And like I said, they've branched out to other cities, other uh, suburbs in Chicago, and they're still very, very big. Actually, one of their leaders got out not too long ago and it created a big war again with the MLDs trying to take old turf back. Hey, I tell you this guys, I don't represent nothing. Nothing. I tell you my story. I tell you where I'm at. You know where I'm at. I'm not hiding. You guys know the address of my gym. Everything. I ain't gang banging. I ain't doing shit. But I am a man before I'm anything. And I stand for what I believe in. And what I believe in is today letting these stories know the lies and the backstabbing that all these organizations do to them at the end because at the end of the day it is not true the gangs started as a latino movement way back in the day as something that was good for the neighborhood that was good for the kids it was almost like a, a, a boys club inside of a neighborhood it started as something good but one way or another, we always manage to poison something good and make it into something bad, what it's become now. Now, what are we doing? We're killing each other, we're murdering each other, we're poisoning each other with drugs. We're doing all these things and then we wanna call it love. Hey, it is what it is, man. But if I take my last breath, I'm gonna give it everything I can to do what I can to get my word out, to get my message out there. And if it costs my life, so be it. My name's JC. I am Ron the Strong. Hey, don't judge nobody. Stay in your lane. Live savage. And remember, you only have one life to live, bro. Live it out here. Family and getting better every day. Be Ron the Strong. I'll catch you guys on the rebound.